and the floor is yours. Thank you. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you, David, for the introduction. And I appreciate the time, the chance to spend some time with you um, in May, learning more about the role faculty and staff can play in the recruitment and yield efforts that the Office of Undergraduate Admissions spearheads. So I am open to how this presentation can work. I do have about 17 to 20 prepared slides, but I would also like to leave a lot of time for ideas and discussion as well. Um, a lot of the work that I put together was really thinking about the Division of Student Affairs as a whole. So I will be ad-libbing a lot of things about faculty along the way. So I just wanna be upfront with that. I'm so grateful that the Division of Student Affairs, that newsletter is reaching the entire campus and I'm glad to see faculty are seeing that opportunity to also participate in some training. So I'm going to um, share my screen and then we'll just get started. Um, one moment. So the topic that, that David gave me was learning more about the role played by staff and faculty in supporting undergraduate admissions and recruiting at NKU. And also I wanted to describe our admission cycle, the outreach strategies and the methods of engagement that we use. So I wanted to, um, first of all, remind us that we have a recruitment plan. It's the 2021 recruitment plan, success by access, recruitment for tomorrow is our theme. So every year in undergraduate admissions, um, there is a recruitment plan that is put forward that looks at undergraduate, graduate, online A, we took, take a look at uh, school-based scholars, we take a look at the Grant County campus. Um, and all of our work that we're doing is really to support success by design. So we're looking at those four areas of reduce barriers and simplify processes so diverse learners can successfully be admitted and enrolled for NKU. We wanna expand our outreach efforts and partnerships with P12 schools, community college, nonprofits and so forth. We have a great desire to increase the number of first-generation post-traditional international and underrepresented students at NKU. And we'd like to design a welcoming, desirable NKU experience um, for a sense of belonging for us all. Some of you uh, probably hear a lot about what we're looking at as far as the pipeline that we can actually work with at NKU. Sorry about that. Um, and so this is a, a report from Wichi, which is knocking at the college door. Um, and you can see some staggering um, pipeline issues that we are going to be dealing with, um, anywhere from a decrease in Kentucky, Ohio, and Indiana. And we're also seeing approximately 10% of Kentucky high school graduates not choosing to go on to college after high school. Um, we are seeing a lot of competition in greater Cincinnati, northern Kentucky. You can draw a you know, 20 mile radius and pull in four year publics, uh, private schools, community colleges. But also by last count, there were at least 20 other colleges and universities that actually had regional reps that lived in this area or lived in Lexington and Louisville and they were recruiting in greater Cincinnati. So the competition is pretty stiff. Uh, we also know the competition in the local workforce. We've got some really good logistic jobs locally that are touting large salaries of $17 to $22 an hour. So we're seeing a high school principal just talk to me last week and that 18 to 23 ACT sometimes is thinking about going straight to the workforce. And that is a, a group of students that NKU has always resonated well with. Um, and you know this from you, from your readings that you do, some students and parents are questioning um, whether education is worth it. So we've got to think about value. Um, in our office in admissions, um, what we're doing is we're trying to build the funnel. So what we do is we purchase student names, about 120,000 high school sophomores and juniors. We purchase them from ACT, from SAT, NRCCUA. Um, and that allows us to begin talking with them about promoting higher education, brand awareness for NKU, tips on how to go through the college search process with the hook that they wanna raise their hand and say, I'm interested in learning more about NKU so they can move to receiving inquiry mailings. Then we also purchase between 60 and 80,000 high school seniors. Now we're really concentrated in Kentucky, um, Southeast Indiana, Indianapolis, um, Greater Cincinnati, Dayton, Cleveland, Columbus. Um, we're doing some work initially in Detroit. We've done some work in Nashville, Tennessee around soda. So we're also looking at different opportunities to expand our markets. One thing that I would mention to you that is a concern of ours is 
the lack of the ACT and the SAT this past year has given us less names that become available for us to purchase. The great thing is, is NRCCUA is an organization that does um, surveys and, and with high school students, so we're able to capture names through that. But we also cannot do it alone. So we have lots of partnerships that help build awareness. The ones that are mentioned there that we love, the Raise Me is a ninth through 12th grade scholarship tool. So students are able to learn more about NKU because we're a partner. We can get their names so we can begin working with them through the funnel. Uh, Naviance is the same. It's really a CPS district um, tool that's being used, but it's also used quite a bit in Ohio. Um, and then we have some URM outreach with DVS. Um, CPS, Cincinnati Public Schools, Infinite Scholars, YMCA, Black Latino Achievers, and then also Anthony Munoz. NKU also has specific scholarships for YMCA, Black Latino Achievers, and Anthony Munoz, and also Cincinnati Public Schools. A lot of our marketing efforts are around digital advertising. Um, we work with Marcom, and we have a very comprehensive marketing campaign that's about around awareness, visit, and apply campaigns. Um, we have a very strong virtual campus tour that we just updated actually previous to COVID. We had just gone through an update. We are looking at new tools in the future as well. We have a chat feature. We have print publications. Websites are very important to us to share the NKU experience. We have um, both organic email campaigns, but also targeted email campaigns. And then the same with social media. Um, we do a lot around social media to drive students to learn more about the university, to push deadlines, push opportunities to visit campus, application deadline driven as well. Um, we do Twitter, um, Facebook, and Instagram. We also do a lot of direct mail. We did more direct mail this past year than we had just because of COVID. Um, so this means opportunities for us to reach students in their home. And then we do personal phone calls pretty much year round, uh, whether it's from an admissions counselor, orientation leader, student workers. And then we do exercise phone trees for um, targeted messages. And then texting is really a way that we've been able to get to students when they're not responding to emails or phone calls. Texting has worked great for us. Um, the recruitment team in admissions, what we're doing is we're looking at first year recruitment engagement opportunities. Uh, in non-COVID time, we spent we have about 250 high school visits a year. We participate in college fairs, um, state, Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana, also some national college fairs. Um, we have a team from SODA that has helped us do some national college fair for School of the Arts. Um, and we do on-campus events, about 275 a year. Um, those range from North Day experiences, black and gold open houses, closer looks that are around academics, honors, and diversity, we offer group visits for high school students to board a bus and come visit with us at the high school soft, freshman, sophomore, junior year. And we actually sponsor quite a bit of group visits and lunch experiences. We have a specific Latino college fair that allows students to come to our campus and learn more about NKU, but also other colleges as a way to help promote higher education. And then we're on our 14th year of doing a multicultural leadership conference that is a rising conference for high school juniors. Uh, typically, it is in May. It's an overnight experience. We were not able to do this last year, but we are doing a multicultural leadership summit in August um, as a opportunity to connect with multicultural students before their senior year in high school. Um, we do a lot of on-site admission events where we will take um, computers and laptops into facilities, high schools, communities to get them to apply for admission and have on-campus decision making, um, admission decision making. We have lots of partnerships with transfer recruitment, um, pathways and partnerships, very strong Cincinnati State, which we're getting ready to relaunch and revamp. We have a gateway to NKU program that's strong. Um, last year, we launched the River City Promise that implemented in 2020. Um, if the schools, there's six local schools in Northern Kentucky, if they're able, if they're Pell eligible, they can start at Gateway and have their tuition covered. And then the goal is to transfer to NKU to complete that bachelor's degree. And then we also help them cover up to tuition. Um, we have special pockets of students, school-based scholar, which you're probably aware of, our dual credit students. So we have some targeted efforts to them. And last year, we launched the Young Scholars Academy um, in Kenton County, which is allowing high school juniors and seniors to actually be enrolled full-time on our campus um, in NKU courses. 
And that is allowing us a new network to get into that student because they're actually experiencing the NKU campus as an undergraduate, as a high school student. We still have a Grant County campus, so we do some work with them um, all around that area, um, Grant County, Williamstown, Pendleton, Bracken. So we're trying to bring education to that community. We have concentrated campaigns for adult learners, 21 years and older. Um, we call them stop out students that are with us for one semester and don't re-enroll. We actually market to those students so they can re-enroll at our institution without paying another application fee. Um, an application is open for two years. So we recruit them throughout that time if they do stop out. International students, those are the populations that we have been serving the past couple of years. And then we have a very strong, um, as you know, academic partnerships, which offers our online undergraduate and graduate admissions opportunities. So we partner with them and they have uh, competitor, they actually help us recruit in companies and organizations, especially around healthcare. They have a nice arm that helps us with the recruitment messages. Um, NKU and admissions, we are recruiting three classes at a time. So I just met with our team this morning because we're still trying to solidify fall 2020 enrollment while we're starting fall 2022 um, and continuing to push visits. And then we're actually starting fall 2023. Um, we track things with Google Analytics. We have a CRM called Slate that we have been using since 2017. Um, and we're actually moving to use that application for admission versus SAP. So we're in implementation phase with that. We do partner with EAB, Education Advisory Board, which is a leader in higher education around the sophomore junior search. So they build awareness and they drive visits and they're trying to convert requests for information for us. NKU handles internally our senior search for high schools about building awareness, driving visits and driving applications. Right now, we're doing both. We are still trying to drive applications for fall 2021, and we're also shifting to a lot of yielding admitted students and anti-melt efforts. So right now, what we're doing is pushing admitted students to choose to pay their confirmation fee and then choose their orientation date. And then those that have solidified an orientation date, we have some anti-melt strategies to help them stick when classes begin in the fall. I'm very proud of the work that we've done over the past one to three years to really, uh, our parent and family communication has definitely increased. Um, lots of good feedback. We find that involving the parents, of course, is a nice way to get to the student. And right now, parents are the ones that are actually responding to our outreach efforts. Influencer communications are around high school counselors, community partners. Um, so we're working with them. We just had an event on the over the weekend at the Boys and Girls Club in Cincinnati, and we have another one in Covington. Um, and Student Affairs was a partner in that to helping us get the word out to NK about NKU to prospective students. We have a comprehensive transfer communication plan as well. And then all of our job in the last column is really to convert inquiries to apply complete their application, drive visits, and then of, of course, convert enrollments. Wanted to give you a quick idea of what happens at the larger level with our partnership with Marcom. These are some initiatives that they helped us execute this past year. Um, EDGE is a opportunity for students that are non-Kentucky residents to pay in-state tuition plus $500. So we're trying to get that word out that NKU is affordable as a non-resident student. So that has been a wonderful with digital media. Uh, we do a lot with adult learner programs and services, reaching stopouts and helping students in the Kentucky area that have some college but have not completed a degree. You may be familiar with the word project graduate. Transfer students, we have um, high school banner programs, and then we do some marketing around new programs. So the two programs this year that have been high demand were BA in law and BS in cybersecurity. NKU has done a lot of work with website improvements around accessibility and site enhancements. They helped us with our virtual tour. There's a new homepage design. And I know our friends in Division of Student Affairs know that the university housing website was just revamped and it's amazing. And it looks fresh and beautiful and it's easy to, it's easy to navigate for students. It is amazing. And I think I saw some changes to the Division of Student Affairs website as well. So when I was doing some research for this, so that is where we need to spend our time and energy and also um, the academic program pages 
everything is about how can we get them um, virtually and websites now are becoming very important. And so we're gonna talk more about what we should do with websites based on some research that we have. Last year, you may have realized that, the, that we, there were some 2020 high school grads that decided to take a gap year. They weren't sure they wanted to go into college with the pandemic. So we did a gap year campaign that actually drew a 50 mile radius around campus and made sure NKU was fresh on their mind. And we were able to convert some of their enrollments to spring semester to begin, but then we're working with students that did sit out a full year to enroll in the fall. Um, Kentucky Service 8. So VP Howard is new to NKU. He's, he's, running, but the, the eight counties in Northern Kentucky are our sweet spot. So we've got to make sure we're paying attention to our service eight. Um, also greater Cincinnati, and we cannot win the game without expanding the enrollment, but we have to remember this is a competitive area in Northern Kentucky. So if we're not paying attention to our service eight, believe me, other schools are swooping in. We know that greater Cincinnati produces great high school students, strong work ethics, good parental involvement. So other college universities take advantage of that. So I wanna challenge us to think what else can we do in our service aid? We did launch a test optional opportunity for fall 2020. It has come with some challenges, I would say, especially with our friends in the STEM majors that are thinking about how do we properly place in math courses. But we did launch test optional campaign, actually NKU was thinking about this before COVID ever hit. So we'd been studying this. We did launch for fall 2020 um, and we had a test optional campaign that reached across Kentucky, greater Cincinnati, Dayton, Columbus, Southeast Indiana and Indianapolis. And then of course our micro, our accelerated online programs as well. We do a lot of work with micro-credentialing. So we're helping adults come to campus and put together a core group of courses for that education for their business. So we do a lot of marketing with micro-credentials as well. Um, here's a look at some of our digital advertising, and I just wanted to show you that, you know, it's, it's difficult because when we talk to different departments, um, academic departments, sometimes we're thinking, I don't see myself in that. Remember, we're trying to develop material that is reaching 16 to 18 year olds, but also going to capture some adult learners. So we're trying to look at broad subject matter matters that can bring them into looking more about pursuing their passions community reimagination, the STEM progress, um, talking about how we're named Forbes top colleges, uh, dreams are within reach. So we're trying to get those taglines in that bring them to the different colleges. And this is just a sampling of what we're doing digitally. Um, I would tell you that digital works and we've got to have more revenue coming to or new funding to come help us with digital. You will see here that $200,000 investment, we were able to track 85 undergraduate students that found their way through us through digital advertising. So you can see the revenue that's generated there. So I know that um, Marcom and the president and other leaders are looking at ways we can expand our marketing because we can't get there just by high school visits and college fairs alone. So digital marketing is where it needs to be. And we've done a great job. We've got to expand in that as well. We made a big commitment two years ago to make sure we took advantage of billboards and poster boards around Cincinnati public schools. So we rotate these and this is a way for us to be seen in, in since greater Cincinnati because we have a great desire to grow the enrollment from CPS. And you'll see just some of the pictures that we took here that we displayed. So around, you know, the School of Performing Arts, we made sure that we had the soda information there. So we're looking at where can we meet students. We also took advantage of a high school banner program that allowed us to be in certain high schools. And we actually saw increase in applications and admits and enrolls. And it's just those simple ways to have NKU in front of students in certain areas. And this is just a snapshot of what we did. Now this past year in COVID, we really did not help us with our marketing because schools were closed, but we will continue to strengthen that. And it's a way for us to be in our local schools, but we also expanded to Frankfurt to Ashland, to Owensboro, to Louisville. So we're looking at different ways to expand as well. Um, I wanna tell you what we did for our fall 2021 snapshot. So we knew going into fall 2021 recruitment that we had to do all that we could to aggressively recruit for spring 2021. So NKU admission also recruits in the spring. So we went after students that were admitted in fall that did not enroll. So we sent them some gentle messaging about NKU is still here, let's work with you. We were able to track between 32 and 37 students that really took us up on all of the emails that we sent and there were thousands of emails that we sent. But that group reached out to us and we handheld them. 
they were not having a great experience in their institution. They set out for a semester. So we were able to work with them to get them ready to start for spring semester. We did the same thing going after spring that did not enroll for this fall 2020. We pushed visit campus, service eight campaigns, um, Cincinnati Public School, Southeast Indiana. We launched test optional. We did a lot around financial aid awareness. Um, if you don't, if you have social media and you're not following um, CPE, um, I encourage you to do that. And also Kia, because they are great messengers for higher education. And we have found all year that as we expected, the state of Kentucky has been down in FAFSA filers anywhere between 10 and 15%. And if you think about it, our most vulnerable students have not been in schools to get that direct messaging from high school counselors and community partners. So we've been helping to push FAFSA. So if you on social media and you share NKU stuff, I really encourage you to think about CPE and Kia. They're great resources. Um, we really did a lot around merit scholarships and educational diversity pushes and around non-resident edge award. We have a fee waiver application until June 30th. We knew around March 1st that this class was about, well, we knew in the fall, that this class was about six to eight weeks behind. So we began pushing, 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 applying. And then the first part of March, we actually launched with EAB a late application campaign. So we're always looking at ways and looking at stats to figure out what should we do. That push had went out to 120,000 students. So whether they explored NKU or not, and we've seen an increase in applications since March 1st, and that campaign will continue through June 30th. Um, this is what we do on social media. I encourage you to follow Be a Norse um, and share some good things that are in with, with that's happening at NKU. We're all about brand awareness, visiting campus, pushes. We want to tell more success stories, and we do a lot around academics in the Honors College. I mentioned about parent and family campaigns. We also have a high school counselor newsletter that goes once a month. It also goes to campus partners. And every year we have what's called an educator's day where we bring high school counselors to campus and showcase our university, showcase new academic programs, new ways for them to explore NKU for their students. This is really messy and it's a lot, but I wanted to show you that through Slate, we're able to track email and display campaigns. So this is a snapshot of our yield campaign last year. A yield campaign goes out to students that have been offered admission. We can actually track how many have been delivered, what, what they're opening, what unique clicks there are. So we can look at subject lines. We can look at what time of day are they looking at emails. We can actually um, know what devices they're looking at. So we use this to help drive things like subject lines. How short should your text be? Um, what links are they looking at? And that's giving us information to be able to reach out to them as well. But it's really sophisticated. So I show that to let you know that we're able to track what's happening with our email campaigns. Um, so what we did this past year, um, the admission team returned to campus on August 3rd. We've had campus visits every day, Monday through Friday. We were open every Tuesday and Thursday night in the evening for tours. We've been open every Saturday except for major holidays. So your admission team has been at it, trying to get students to visit. We had we followed COVID deadlines, so our tour groups were small. We could have no more than three students in a in a in a tour with family members and a tour guide. As you can see, our, we were about thirty percent attendance rate in our virtual events. We were at seventy five percent showing up for on campus experiences. Right now, we're actually launching campus visits for 2021 grads who haven't had a chance to visit while we're moving forward recruiting for next year with Welcome Wednesdays for 2022 grads. I mentioned about our six to eight week lag behind with this group. Um, you know, we really felt that we had, we needed to make sure that we were doing all that we could to be available virtually. And I'm proud of our team that in the end of 2020 of March, we actually um, moved forward and pivoted everything virtually whether that would be our admitted student days, our, our Norse days, our welcome Wednesdays. And of course we had to pivot for our orientation programs as well. Now I wrote this thinking about some things to highlight that we do with Division of Student Affairs, but I will also talk more about what we do with academic colleges. Um, right now with DOSA, we work with DOSA to partner for campaigns around university housing, around NKU Rocks, LAMP, 
Um, we have a VP welcome that we just got updated from VP Howard, and we have a student engagement roadmap map that I'm working with Tiffany and Sarah on to think about different strategies. So that's part of what we do. And then we do a lot of campaigns to support student support services. Uh, we promote Summer Spark. We promote STEM Ready. We promote opportunities in the summer. Um, we do a lot around veterans and also financial aid. Um, what we did this fall is we had an acceptance email from the deans. We have a confirmation video from the president and also the deans. And we did a lot of work with Dean Buss around the Honors College. He had a lot of seminars virtually to promote Honors College as well. Um, and then I would also tell you that we did a, a lot of virtual opportunities this summer to this spring to connect. We did um, partner with Career Services and had alumni so we could talk about academics and ROI. And we had some faculty that joined us. We worked with Meg to put together a student engagement opportunity virtually. Um, we had virtual opportunities to connect with housing, virtual to connect with financial aid. So we took all the different pieces and offered them virtually um, this past, since actually February. Um, so I wanted to talk about um, some ideas that I had specifically around opportunities with websites and video. So DOSA opportunities, but also academics. Um, those that I've had a chance to speak to in academics, we're always thinking about what is the feature of your program? What are the benefits and show me the proof? And I will tell you, I've been in higher education for 31 years in, in admissions. The families now demand to understand ROI as they should. So helping us think through what is the return on investment from the experience at NKU. So we're looking at, I encourage all of us to look at our websites. Does it answer those questions? Features, benefits, and proof. How do we capture the NKU experience as short as 30 seconds for YouTube, um, as three to five minutes for a presentation, five to seven minutes that can be part of our orientation experience? Printed materials are not dead. Research shows us that we've got to make sure that we've got printed materials to recruit with. I was just touring the student union and I, I went into the student engagement area and I saw flyers about engagement on campus and they were colorful and they tell a message. That allows students to walk away with something that becomes next steps of how to be involved. Um, parent and family piece upon acceptance. Is there a DOSA social media, an, a larger DOSA that we can share things on that help us share our branded messages? And then of course, student stories. We as an institution have to do a better job of creating a pipeline. So whether this is an academic experience or a leadership experience, um, my hope is that NKU will make a commitment to create a leadership experience for ninth through 12th graders on campus. Also diversity inclusion experiences. The same could be said for academics. Now, I know that all of us do a lot with high school students. Um, I know that we have the nurse camp, we have journalism camp, we have entrepreneur experiences. So I challenge us to think through what can become part of our fabric and its tradition that we're allowing these opportunities to build a pipeline before we start talking to them about enroll at NKU, because having that experience gives them a chance to connect and build affinity groups. Um, we need to adopt a Kentucky Service Aid or CPS school. Perhaps you have an interest, faculty or Division of Student Affairs folks, in being more involved. Maybe your neighbor down the street is a principal at an elementary school. Maybe you're someone at church you know is a superintendent. What are those opportunities that you have to help us connect? Because remember, we go through the high school counselor. Their, their um, caseload is 450 to 1. They're trying to manage school's class schedules, testing, personal counseling. So sometimes the college planning gets left alone. So we're gonna think about how we can adopt some schools and have NKU be branded in those. If you think about a traditional recruitment strategy, September through December is our heavy off-campus recruitment. We have eight staff members to help recruit. And it's not enough folks when you're thinking about trying to pay attention to Kentucky, Ohio, and Indiana. And remember our college fairs happen at the same time, right? So in the past, we've worked with some folks that would say, yeah, I'll be happy to go to Dayton for three days and, we, and you train me and I can actually represent the university. So we're gonna need some help expanding our reach. Um, and as I mentioned before, we do have faculty that do some of this, um, especially around soda, but we also have national college fairs in Cincinnati, Louisville, that we actually have taken faculty with us to recruit. 
I want to take advantage of your time. I don't want to take advantage of your time. I want to make sure we put you in places that are, that are going to work. So a normal high school visit may not be the answer, but being able to rally around a specific recruitment with high school visits and college fairs combined may be a way that you can help expand our reach. Um, you know, letter writing and calling campaigns. We write handwritten notes to admitted students. We actually got a postcard sent to us from a high school senior that said she had never gotten a handwritten piece of mail. And she sent us that to tell us, thank you. So we can't forget that that personal approach is helpful. Um, and then we have Office of Admission Success by Design Synergy teams, and we'll be developing who are um, the folks that will serve on those. So we will ask every college to have a representative. And then also VP Howard, there'll be someone from the Student Affairs on each of those committees. And we'll launch, we're finishing up our work this year and we'll launch again around July 15th for those. And we're looking at data recruitment engagement opportunities, and also communication and marketing. So um, I want to stop my share at this point and talk with you about some ideas that you have that we could think about and questions that you have that I could address from the admission side. And not everybody speak at once. I have posted in the chat something, Melissa. To, okay, let me look. Explain. Could you explain melt to to folks? In yeah, yeah. Thank you. I could. Um, so yes. So, you know, we are finding that this is nothing new. Um, it's typical that students are going all the way through the admission process and being admitted, and they are actually depositing at multiple schools, and they're actually attending multiple orientations. So we are not finished recruiting and yielding that student until we actually show up on the first day of class. So the anti-melt strategy is connecting with that student and helping them, helping them to not withdraw their confirmation and make sure they attend orientation. So you know, right now we're, we're about a little over 100 freshman confirmations down for fall. So we're working at different strategies to continue to work students through from admission, from application to admit. And right now we have very concentrated efforts for students that applied March 1st on. Now what we've been doing all year is we've been connecting with that student to help them take the next step around choosing their orientation date and sticking. So through that, the things like the president's video on May 1 to celebrate. You may have seen that we're doing yard signs for students to put in their yard and we work with alumni to help us uh, meet in areas in Lexington, Louisville, Greater Cincinnati, Southeast Indiana. Right now, we're pushing students that have confirmed to actually choose a registration date. We're pushing NKU Rock, NKU Lamps. Honors is working that class. I know the Division of our Arts and Sciences, that college has done a lot the entire year working with their admitted students to get them to the next step. There have been unique things like the, the I heard that the uh, chair of English and languages, you know, they actually went to um, Jungle Gym and got, um, you know, treats from the language that they want to learn and, and be a, you know, professor at, with and meld those. So we have strategies throughout the summer, but I've been challenged this morning, just this morning, what else can we do that doesn't compete with orientation? So I will be reaching out asking for how can we partner with um, Division of Student Affairs what do we need to do differently with financial aid outreach? Under VP Howard's leadership, working with Leah Stewart and Kim Scranage, we have some new approaches to how we're working with students who have signed up to live in the residence halls and may or may not be solid with financial aid, right? So remember we have, I met a student Saturday um, at um, Boys and Girls Club who is coming to NKU. We just, she did her FAFSA three days ago. So she doesn't understand yet the financial commitment that, she, that she's going to have. So we've always worked with students, but I will say it's never been more important for us to know where students are before the first day of class, before they move into the residence halls. So those are some of the strategies that we're doing. Um, we have a cell phone wallet that goes to students in August. It's a little note from their dean of their college. We have sticker sheets that are that are NKU sticker sheets that we will work with your with our student government president so she'll do a welcome that'll go out so they get NKU stickers for their laptops and so forth. 
Um, we will do outreach efforts to support rocks and lamp. I know Tiffany does a lot with Fresh Start, right, to get those students. Um, but I've been challenged this morning to think of new ideas. So the, we're, we're thinking, um, and right now we don't wanna confuse people to, should I come to orientation or, or do I go to this event? And I'm thinking, what can we do in June that is around engaging with students, even in smaller groups on campus? Because remember, a large group of these incoming freshmen have not been able to be on campus. I'm just gonna add one more thing, Melissa, then I'm yeah. gonna be quiet and let other people talk. Yeah. The, the, thing, the thing that makes recruitment for our type of institution more difficult is the fact, well, I'll say this, the thing that makes our institution really good is we're right here and we're close to people. The thing that makes it difficult for us recruits is we're close here and we're right next to people. So people feel like they don't have to have a sense of urgency about registration, about applying, because it's right down the road. I mean, so if, and, and, and because of the fact that we're so close and because they're not going off the college in their mind, they just feel like they can delay a lot of their decision making. And that's, that's the problem that we have. A lot of times our students are slow to move because we're sitting here. That coupled with the fact that we might be a second choice school because um, they're waiting on their first choice before they make a decision where they'll fall back. And so those are certain things I think sometimes that delay our student. They have no sense of urgency to go ahead and get things done uh, because we're right down the road and they can always come down here and, and get everything done and get it all packaged and be ready to go by fall which makes us nervous <laughs> because right. we're, waiting, we're waiting for them to make a decision this, and they're still, they've made a decision ahead, just hadn't told us. Yeah, and we, we also know um, every, you know, we, we felt really good going into May 1st. And what I mean by that is um, and when May 1, we were tracking down about 35 confirmations. We made up a huge ground, 230 deposited right before May 1. Um, I meet every month with the directors of admissions across the state. Even the four year, even UK and U of L are nervous. It's not just NKU, it's not just the regional campuses. And remember when, when, when schools went test optional, it allowed students to have that dream school. Maybe I wanna apply to UK or UC or U of L or even, even broader than that. And so we also now students are calling us saying, it's not gonna work out for me at my dream school. Let's get them admitted. So our, our team is working tremendously to make up the time of applying, complete your app, get you admitted, explore the campus, pay your confirmation fee, choose orientation. So we're going to be recruiting the entire summer, which we always have, but it's really, it's, 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 um, it's a bigger push this year. I know that students right now, they're, they're getting to go to proms, they're getting to go to graduations, and right now they're concentrated on wrapping up their senior year, and we know that, so we're giving a little bit of space. Um, but, you know, last week we sent a text message to a group of students who have not opened their emails in two weeks. Right, because we can see in Slate they haven't opened their emails. So we're emailing, we're texting them saying important information about orientation, check your email. And immediately, oh, oh, you know, immediately. And we don't, we do not text them until 2.45 since they're out of school. Um, but but that is an, an example of what we're trying to do to move them. Um, we've got to get students to choose orientation dates. We had alumni that helped us make phone calls two weeks ago. We have orientation leaders. So the admission team, we're dividing and conquering right now to move new admits to the funnel and then admitted students to enrolled to pay choose an orientation date. Okay, Melissa, here's a couple of things. Yeah, Eric. Um, so first, as you know, we have our, and, and one, you do a fabulous job. So does your office, so does financial aid. So this is, I'm nothing I'm going to suggest is any kind of critique or criticism of anything you're doing because you're on it. Um, a couple of things from what you're saying. I am wondering with those alumni that are um, calling them, if they're in their major or if they're in their, you know, what they're thinking about doing, would it be possible to say, and I will meet you at orientation. I will be there uh, to answer your questions. You know, we'll have lunch. I know we can't do that kind of stuff right now with COVID at this point, we're getting out of that. But something that there is a connection between them that, okay, I'm following up and I'm going to meet you so that we can already get that kind of court, not the corporate, but the business, the, the career part already in there and the, and the sense of community with alumni. Yeah. The next thing, um, you know, Judy and I, as you know, we fight this constantly with the sense 
that Berea is a free college. We know this is crap. You know this is crap. Without the Pell Grant, Berea dies, as do many other colleges. We are just, we are as cost effective, if not more so, than Berea. And yet, with low income kids, um, we have to we fight that constantly, having to show them, okay, when you get your financial aid package from the college, you're going to see this is different. NKU is going to offer you more than you think right now. I know how I know this is hard um, because and, and that's why at the last minute, some of them come through and end up going to NKU because they realize they're going to get more money going to NKU. Right. Yeah. And the other thing is, is there anything that we could do in terms of like, I know this is going to sound really nuts, but something like a rebate or if you go to or, you know, if you sign up or I know you do certain things, but if it could just be like, we'll give you cash if you if you commit by March 1st and show up at that orientation by June 1st, we'll give you a hundred bucks. I know it's stupid or free parking. And I'm saying this not even knowing if Curtis could ever do anything like that. But some, I mean, something like that mm-hmm. might be, a, you know, it might be a tipping point. And thanks mm-hmm. a lot for dealing with melt because we, that has been an issue this year more than any before. The whole melt thing is just, it's, it's very difficult with uh, what's been happening with virtual, you know, school. Thanks. Yeah. So a couple things, um, you know, the alumni outreach, I was actually here on campus when alumni came in and made phone calls. And I actually, we pulled lists that would have them call their majors the, the genuine conversations that happened were beautiful and it was fantastic. And so we wanna be able to expand those and have alumni call maybe once a month next year versus coming in at the end, right? So I like the idea of having alumni help us at some orientation dates. I definitely jotted that down. Um, you know, I, I did not go far in, I know that you have on your agenda at some point to talk to financial aid and student account services, but we have, a ton of opportunities around Northern Difference and Strive that are reaching Pell Grant eligible students. So you are correct, Eric, that I would be the first to say as a Kentucky resident, NKU is definitely affordable. No doubt about it. So we've been able to offer attractive scholarship packages. What is happening is my school is Connor High School. I'm going there tonight to to give out college awards for scholarships. Talking to that counselor, university, I will not say the name, they're red and they're in Kentucky they have actually got a hold of some Connor graduates because the right kids from Connor went to that school last year and had a great experience and they're recruiting it and it brings the knowledge back, right? So I love the idea years ago, we used to have what we call black and gold scholars. We would go into targeted areas, have some money to help actually help with some housing. And it allowed for students to come to campus that were good role models on that school. They had a great experience at NKU. The word of mouth got back. So I would like to pursue that in the future. Now, I will tell you that we're struggling in non-resident. Right now, even with EDGE, which means your tuition is in-state plus $500, um, there are very limited additional awards. If you have um, a 3.75, you can get another $1,000. If you you also can uh, apply for foundation scholarships, but we know that we're losing ground on non-resident students being able to afford NKU. So that is a challenge that we need to meet. And then, the, you know, given a cash out, you know, I will tell you, um, we follow NACAC, National Association of College Admission Counseling. That is our professional development organization. Um, and with that, um, there used to be a lot of rules about what you could do around May 1st. You may have heard over the years, that those are out the, wa- they're out the water. I can tell you that I lost students the week before May 1st because another school rolled out all these scholarship dollars right around May 1st that in the past would not have happened. So we've got to be more competitive. And we did roll out some additional scholarships and working with students, but competition is pretty steep. It's pretty steep as well. Well, uh, so there were, um, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Leo. Go ahead, David, go ahead, please. And I'll go after you. Um, there, were, there were two questions in our comments in the chat for you, um, okay. Melissa. The first one was from Joan Adkins. Um, I live in Wisconsin. Can we add some of the technical colleges as alliances? I actually sent her a message privately to email me so I can learn more about the opportunities because we definitely are expanding. And with our academic partnerships that brings online programs across the nation and the world, actually, we may be able to look at that. So Joan's gonna reach out to me privately. And then um, Amy Ishmael wrote, I wonder if alumni faculty would be willing to visit high schools with a PowerPoint presentation. For example, faculty from computer science demonstrating Mm -hmm. how students will learn interactive data visualization with Power BI 
where faculty from the science is bringing a lab show on the road. Mm -hmm. So just some brainstorming and you know, maybe there's some other ideas. Sure. So some of you have been a, a part of NKU for a while. So you might remember Road to NKU tour that we did in 2014 and 15 under the president's leadership. Um, and um, our pre current president is very interested in all roads lead to NKU is the new terminology that we're using. So we definitely are looking at opportunities to do that showcase alumni that have actually been a product of an academic program at NKU and they can also speak on their student engagement here as an undergraduate. Um, what we need to do and, and keep this in mind is we need to figure out what is the right way to get faculty members with a good message into the right classes. So it's not always the high school counselor to, to do that. So when I mentioned our, adopting a service eight school, wouldn't it be great next fall if we were to say, we've got guest lecturers in STEM, guest lecturers in informatics, guest lecturers in the College of Education, business and so forth. And then what we could do is try to target that sophomore and junior year, where we could be invited into that as a guest lecturer, because you are the experts on the topics that would be a nice complement to what the high school students are learning in the high school building bringing that college perspective. So that is a desire for us and, the, and our president definitely wants us to push that with more alum and faculty being in the classroom. Melissa, um, thank you again. You know what, when, when you look at the, uh, the growth of Latinos at, at NKU, I'm telling you without your assistance and your leadership, we would not be where we are. And I mean it, uh, when you look at the number of students that we had 20 years ago versus now. Again, thank you again for that. For that to build on what Eric was talking about, okay? Uh, not only have we had to go and look at, connect, be able to connect the students who want to come to NKU with alumni, but also connect the existing students to the alumni. Let me give you an example. A student who is a sophomore major in biology, she wants to be a doctor. Her name is Angie. At any rate, we were able to go and, Lamp was able to go and connect her with Dr. Cannon, who retired from NKU, as you know. And she was able to connect her with the alumni. And that's, again, I want to go back to what Eric uh, emphasis on the alumni, because they do play a critical role. A couple of weeks ago, I was reading an article in the um, uh, Chronicle on Higher Education. And basically, they were looking at the decrease of birth rates in mm -hmm. the U.S. since 1979. You're very much familiar with that. So we have had a decrease in the birth rate, okay? So the only hopeful growth that we could bring in is minorities, you know, mm -hmm. African-Americans and Latinos. And the question is that what, what can we do to attract them? Because again, there's only a few. And, 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 and so who's, who's going to be more innovative to, to, to attract them? And I guess that's going to be, that's going to be a challenge. Um, and the things that we have in place at NKU, but how do we build, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and you're aware of that. The other thing that I'd like to go and for you to go and talk a little bit about is the, the, uh, the common application. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, first thing about alumni. So I want to give uh, kudos to Julie Bradwell because she helped make some phone calls for us. I just saw her. So, but I also want to mention um, th there is a meeting on Wednesday with Gannon Tagger, uh, Amy Wiley, and myself to look at platforms that connect admitted students to current students and also alumni and then admit and then connect current students to alumni. Um, we've been using People Grove, which might be familiar to some of you. We use People Grove as a beta testing un under Lauren Moore's leadership in admissions for two years. They, and so we connected admitted students to alumni. They hosted some activities and also current students. The issue was we, we, need, we don't want students to change platforms when they enroll at NKU. So we're looking at one platform from admitted all the way until they graduate because our alumni want to be involved and they are asking more and more how to be involved. And it's not just showing up at a table and giving out NKU pins. They want to actually use their tech, their, their skill set. So I think I'm confident that there's going to be some movement on a platform and strategic investments made to connect to our alumni. So that'll answer that question, Leo, for you. Um, I would also mention that um, the Common App, we went live with the Common App last year. So we're in our second year of the Common App. Um, we did that to try to compete in for brand awareness to get NKU's name on a list of other student, other schools that choose the Common App. Um, we don't love it, Leo, but, but it has been an outreach effort for international students and also greater Cincinnati. A lot of schools in Kentucky are, are 
considering whether we stick with Common App because it's a, if you're not requiring essays and letters of recommendations, as we don't in admissions, it becomes a barrier. When they think, oh, I don't wanna to apply to NKU because they're gonna request all this information for us. So, but we are still moving forward with one more year as a, as a third year trial for the Common App. Um, and then you mentioned about, what was your third thing, Leo? Oh, the, the addressing diversity. So yeah, so um, NKU, you know, we've gotta make some strategic investments um, in admissions and advising and student engagement to make sure that we're able to meet our URM students where they are. Um, NKU made a commitment years ago to have an admissions counselor or staff member who's bilingual, but that is not enough and we know that. There needs to be an opportunity for bilingual advisors, financial aid folks, student engagement folks that can reach this community. So I would join a group that would say to NKU, we gotta do better. We've gotta be able to meet the needs of our students. So um, NKU has strategically, it's all of our responsibility to recruit diverse learners in admissions. It's all of our jobs to recruit and retain diverse learners. It's not just one group of people. So we're definitely moving, uh, continuing to move in that direction where we do have some staff members that have diversity as part of their title, but they help us think through strategy. They help us think through partnerships. They help us think through Anthony Munoz and DVS and Infinite Scholars. So we need to expand, and I have on my list that's been on there for a while, we've got to have a regional rep living in Louisville. We've got to have a regional rep representing NKU. Um, it's, a, it's a budget issue, but we are the only school in Kentucky that at this point has not made that investment for a regional rep. And Leo, you've been around long enough to know, we used to have a regional rep that lived in Louisville. But when we had to have more folks on campus, we had to move that position home. But now the way to get to students is in their communities, in their hometowns, um, and we can't do it just by going to a high school visit or a college fair. It's got to be the Sakasas and the Boys and Girls Club, YMCA Black Achievers, and it takes all of us to think about how can we join organizations and boards to get NKU's name through those. So it, it's going to be, it's, it's a steep climb, Leo, and you know that. Um, so we appreciate your partnership and knowing that, and I, and I, I know too with Division of Student Affairs, um, you know, we have limited resource for things like Fresh Start and Rocks and LAMP. And we, if we were able to fill those with more students, um, what do that, would that make a difference, right? But we, it's a financial commitment as well. So thinking through how do we stretch resources, new, new staff that are coming on campus, what type of training can we do to them so they become an ambassador of NKU? Um, someone mentioned about having student workers that are interpreters. Um, that is a great way for us because Leo will tell you, there have been times when I've called him on a cell. Leo, I need some help. Um, a family's coming in, we're not able to serve their needs. So having those connections would be great. Um, and then also looking at key recruitment pieces that we can continue to strengthen and, and translate to Spanish to meet our students. We have a campus tour, we have some parts on our website, we do a presentation in Spanish, but there's so much more than we can do. We've done some Spanish uh, radio station buzz. Uh, but there's more that we need to do, um, and it, be needs, it needs to become a higher priority as an institution. And Melissa, finally, thanks for all the goodies for the uh, Fun with Science Camp. Uh, oh, camp good. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, the, the science camp that, that Leo's speaking of is, is a perfect example of building our pipeline early, getting them, on, getting them as part of NKU earlier to learn more about the academic programs and opportunities. And then when, when we go at them to visit campus, apply for admission, they already have a sense of what NKU is going to be like. And they're more interested in taking it the next step forward to make, making that application. What are other thoughts? You know, I see some faculty on here. Um, you know, I cannot say enough about um, I mean, I could talk about each of you, but you know, I want to give Aaron Sanders from College of Education big kudos and Megan Schmidt from informatics. Um, I'm looking through here. Um, individuals that work for their colleges that are actually straddling both. They're doing, um, you know, helping us with recruitment all the way through yielding that student. They're thinking about communications plans and marketing plans and outreach efforts. Um, and they're remembering that high school students, are, we're speaking to them as 17 to 19 year olds. We've also got to think of them as adult learners. So when, when NKU makes investments in advisors by college, general advisors, all of that becomes, it expands our recruitment 
arm to reach in every different college. So I just wanna say kudos to them as well. What other, what other thoughts do we have? Hey, Melissa, yeah, just Chris. a question about if you, if you wanted to volunteer or help with the high school college or high school fairs at those locations you mentioned, how, do you have to go through some special training? Oh, to yeah, do that? good, good, what we do. Yeah, what we do is um, we do, um, we will start looking for volunteers. Um, we cover the expenses and admission, so we can cover the rental car. We, we set you up with direction if a hotel cost is needed, and we do training. So what we typically do is... Um, some of you remember um, Ray that was in CSI. Ray had previously been an admissions counselor somewhere. So she, she loved it. So we did some training with her and we actually sent her out for a week. She actually went to Cleveland and helped us recruit. So we will do training. Um, if you're local, we'll try to get you to go to a local college fair with somebody so you can see how we set up a table and answer general questions. And remember, it's, it's a tall order for admissions. We are generalists about the entire university, right? So we have publications and materials to talk about the application process tuition, scholarships. Um, and the main goal is just to connect with that student, have them fill out an inquiry card, they become part of our lead, and then we do a lot of communication um, out through our communication plan. So we will um, ask for volunteers this summer and we will arm you with training and our peak will be September through December, which is also everyone else's peak, right? There's never a good time, but that is a good way. And then sometimes we have national college fairs in Cincinnati and Louisville where having another person go with us allows us to send an admissions expert somewhere else. And you're with us as an extra person to help fill the table. Does that make sense? So the struggle that we get in trying to recruit three states at a time is just all kinds of conflicts. We do have alumni that help us as well, um, but that is something that we would love to have assistance and we'll let you all know when those opportunities become available. Melissa, this is just for my own edification. So what happens when parents who are bright and committed and really into their student doing well in school, who may either need micro-credentialing, a graduate degree or an undergraduate degree, how, do we, how are we connecting with them during orientation to look at maybe getting them in somehow? So in, in, our, in our full day um, orientations, that is part of my presentation in the morning. Um, I do a whole welcome to NKU and I speak to them as parents and the achievements they've made. It's never too late to take to get a micro credential, start a graduate degree. Um, and then we sent, we send out, we have a parents listserv, family and parent listserv that we share a lot of information on um, as well, Eric. So this summer we have a shortened half day program. So I, I'm glad that you gave me that little reminder. So think about some, some targeted messaging around that um, would be important. Um, but the parents newsletter is really what we're doing as well. Um, and then I want to mention too, um, we partner with Cindy Knox. Um, Britta actually had this idea for student office of student accessibility. Um, Cindy gets all kinds of random questions all the time from the entire campus, including admissions. And so we actually put together a virtual night. I think we had about 40 folks that attended. Um, and it was a virtual night to allow families to come. And that was a new initiative this year that came from us listening to our parents and our students and engaging them. So that will be part of our fabric of our recruitment and to offer that um, with Cindy's participation as well. Um, let me see what else. Is there any other um, a question that was asked was, is there any specific outreach for LGBTQ plus students? So um, under Bonnie's leadership, um, probably, gosh, is this the third year, Bonnie? This might be the third year. You know, we made a change to our application for admission, which allowed us to get some rich data from students who were interested in learning more about opportunities for the LGBT community to support students, to become advocates. And so uh, under Bonnie's leadership, she's able to pull that list and do some outreach effort. We've also partnered with Bonnie um, for the a GLAD organization on campus. We've been able to sponsor some activities. Bonnie has come to campus and met with individual students and parents that had questions about enrollment. So it's more, I'd say, personal recruitment at this time. And then we have the data available for outreach efforts, especially once they enroll on our campus um, to be able to assist. So 
If you've been a part of our recruitment through Black and Gold Day and Welcome Wednesdays, the Center for Student Inclusiveness has a table that is able, and they have ambassadors that can talk about all different areas of CSI, African-American, Latino, LGBTQ, Office of Student Accessibility. So those are some of those efforts. And we also promote during orientation. Well, I'd like to, to thank you for being here today, Melissa. I think we all learned quite a bit. And I think that there's some excitement out there for how we can assist with recruitment and yielding these students so that they come to NKU and then they successfully complete their time at NKU as well. So thank you very, very much. Um, as a reminder to everyone, uh, I will post the recording of this session on the Student Affairs website as soon as it's done processing. Uh, and then our next professional development session will be Wednesday, June 2nd, and that's going to be focused on uh, assessment and data. So we look forward to seeing everyone then. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, guys. Bye.